What's up, everybody? Prof Sales coming at YouTube with yet another video on another Friday. Man, I like doing videos on Friday. So hopefully you guys can hear me okay. I see me in the, the feed, but I don't know if you can hear me or not. So let me know in the chat if the audio is good. It probably is, but you never know with these things, technology being what it is these days. Um, so yeah, we're going <clears> to... <throat> Got a few things to talk about. Kind of an impromptu show. I literally decided 20 minutes ago to do this show. <laughs> so I can't guarantee there's going to be good quality. Of course, you know, watch today many different, right? But um, yeah, it is Friday, May 26th. And uh, here in the Charlotte area, I'm finally seeing a sunny day. Man, it feels like it's just been raining forever. But um, the sun is shining. The birds are singing. The hills are alive with the sound of music, whatever, and, you know, we're off and going. So people are filing in the room, which is very cool. Um, how's everybody doing out there? How's your sales been this month? We got uh, five days left, plus today, I guess. So 27, 28, 29, 30, yeah. So we got five days left. Memorial Day weekend um, is upon us. But um, how's your sales been, you know, Say in the chat, how's it been going? Have you been up? Have you been up down versus last month versus last year? Are you guys, are you guys, do you guys track your results versus last year? I find that kind of interesting. You know, in retail management, you often talk about comp store sales. Like, how did this store do versus last year at the exact same time period? And that's kind of a measure of, you know, because you would think in any given year to year, like the months should be relatively the same, you know. April should be the same as last April, you know, all things being equal. There's all the same factors at play and so on. So um, I try to look at that. I try to look at how I did last year in sales and am I improving? Am I declining? Am I staying the same? <clears throat> and some people were saying in the chat that um, it's been slow, <laughs> but they haven't been listing. Well, there you go, Camille. That definitely has an impact. Uh, clearing clutter says up since a year ago because I've been trying. <laughs> I like that. I'm up because I've been trying. Man, that's all right. That's it. That's all I got. It's a show, you know, right? That's all you need to do right there is just try a lot of times, right? Um, but that is kind of true. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, some other people are filling in the room. Jennifer says, this is month six for us, but there's been some incremental growth since January. That's good. Um, Ken says his stores are up 20%. Dan says, good show already. Oh, so he's done too. He's out. Peace. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, DJ says, sales have been slow, still learning on navigating the store. Yeah, how many of you guys, too, have your items listed in store categories? That, if you have a store, that is something that I did not do a very good job of when I first started. And now I think I'm, I'm having to go back and um, go through my listings and relist them into the correct stores. Kind of a pain in the butt or the correct categories in the store. But it just helps your shopper. If they come to your store, it helps them find, you know, a category items they're looking for. You got to create a bunch of categories depending on what you're selling. You might have to create, you know, like 30 categories. But um, anyway, um, you know, if you haven't done that, try that. It's not a bad idea. It, you know, if you haven't done it, you got a lot of listings up. What I do is I will go through and I will, I will, I will click on my active listings and I'll click category other <clears throat> because that's where everything got dumped that didn't have a category. And so it'll pull up the list. And I will find like all the ones that are alike. You know, obviously I have a lot of jeans, have some shoes. So say it's men's jeans. I'll find every jean within that hundred that's men's, click it, then click edit, and then change the category for those, you know, say it's 25. And now that way you can kind of batch them and do them in, in, you know, in batches so it's not such a big Herculean task to do all at once. Because if you got to do it all and, man, you're selling a lot of different stuff, it's a pain in the butt. And then if you don't have a category, you got to go back out of that, go to manage my store, create a category, come back into the listings. Um, but, you know, try that if you haven't done it. Um, it's one of those things where you never know if it's really going to help or not. 
So you're kind of going to have to do it and take a leap of faith that, all right, it's the right thing to do for customers. It's kind of like putting up, I, I, I liken it to this, like when you walk into Lowe's or Home Depot, you know, they have the big categories up that'll say like lighting, plumbing, paint, electrical, you know, and you know down that aisle what you're going to find. It's kind of the same idea. I mean, it makes navigation in the store easier rather than if you just put everything in there and had no signage. Um, it would be hard to find things. And so, I don't know. Again, it's a thing where you can't pinpoint how much it's helping, but it can only help, if that makes sense. Um, let's see, other comments in the chat room. Uh, Camilla's hoping that her sales will go up this week um, and listing a lot this weekend. Robert's up. He's been doing sales and listing more. Yep, that's a good, good thing. <clears throat> Uh, big boy's trying to decide if you should go to Golden Corral or Chinese Buffet for lunch. Hmm. I'd say the buffet. I'm with, I'm with you there, Michelle. Uh, Golden Corral. Man, I haven't been to one of those in years. Um, <laughs> what in the world? All right, the chat is devolving into chaos about where to eat. Um, well, it's 2 o'clock here, so I'm kind of in between meals. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to eat late this afternoon because I'm going to be hanging out with Luke. From, and my friend Eric, but um, and we're going to get together and shoot some pool, maybe throw some darts, maybe, I don't know, talk a little shop. And um, Luke, had been, Luke had mentioned us getting together on a live show tonight. I don't know about what. <laughs> and after we've been, you know, out for a couple hours, that could be a bad idea on another front. But um, could be fun. So, yeah, I'm going to see Luke, Endless Entrepreneurs. If you haven't seen his channel, check it out. He's got a good channel, and he's in the middle of uh, trying to get 3,000 L.L. Bean pants listed. Literally, 3,000 L.L. Bean pants. Or maybe it's 4,000. I can't remember, but I think it's 3,000. And um, he's plowing through them, man, but whew, what an endeavor. Um, so anyway, all right, <clears throat> let me get a little water here. Marcos in the house. What's up, Marcos? All right, so... <clears throat> Big boy says, do you think Casey will wear the romper? Yeah, I guess there's some bet about if Luke can't get him listed by a certain date, then he has to wear a romper, or Casey, the rock star flipper, has to wear a romper. I I just can't get in the middle of romper. You know, it just, I don't know. It's just not for me. Um, but anyway, it's a bet, so obviously they have to wear it, and I guess, you know, <clears throat> jump on YouTube and humiliate themselves in the ridiculous rompers. And you're wearing rompers right now. Very sorry if I offended you and your your romper romperish. All right. So the topic of the show guys, and I've been thinking about this um, for kind of all day and actually part of yesterday too. I was listening to a podcast. I was listening to the Merch Minds podcast, which is with Young and Glenn Zubia, who's been on this channel before. And it's about merch, merch by Amazon, the print-on-demand service where, and, and, you know, Karn and I have started developing some designs and well, and we've started getting some sales in there, and it's really cool, and we got a long way to go, and I don't, I don't even feel like I'm an amateur level yet, honestly. <clears throat> so that's why I still am spending a decent amount of time listening to their podcast, which is really good, by the way. You know, they, they talk about how to get designs up, what tools to use. They, they give their numbers, you know, all the things you would come to expect. Um, so, Yong was, Yong was uh, actually in, in Atlanta for one of the podcasts here in the, I don't remember when the podcast was, maybe within the last few weeks. And he went to a business conference where he, um, it was a creative design conference. He is a graphic designer, but he also has a pretty decent merch business as well as an Amazon FBA business. So he was going there to learn things about design and so on that he could apply to his business. And you know, he was he was railing against people who didn't like this idea of ever investing in their their business education, I guess for lack of a better term. And he didn't understand that. And um, you know, these people would he made that he made the analogy, you know, hey, these people would go spend fifty bucks 
you know, drinking beer and, and eating food, but you know, wouldn't go spend fifty dollars on a conference to improve their business or, or take a course, you know, maybe what have you, something to improve the, their business. So I just started thinking about this idea about investing in your business education and what does it get you now? You know, you kind of it kind of gets tricky when you start defining this term business education. You could argue if you get on YouTube and you watch people who are doing what you want to do and they're imparting knowledge to you that that is investing in your business ed education. Maybe you're just investing time to watch them or listen to them. But there's also, you know, a whole other world out there of people who are providing paid content. And I think that's really what he was talking about. And this idea that, you know, you pay somebody money for some information they have that you don't have. Maybe it's information you can't get. Maybe it's information they delivered in a certain way that appeals to you or will connect with you. Maybe it's having access to them. Uh, maybe it's all the above. I don't know. But I just want to throw it out there to you guys. How many of you in the chat and later watching this video by a show of virtual hands, how many of you in the chat have invested in your business education? And by invest in this case, we'll say you've paid money for some sort of service. I, I don't want to say like a subscription to, you know, a subscription to eBay to get a store. That's not really investing in your business education. That's just a subscription to, you know, promote your business. But I'm talking about to improve your mind, to learn more, to understand how to be better in your business. And what, you know, what, what did you invest in and how did it go? How did it go? What like what did you get from it? What do you what did you learn? What did you not learn? Did you think it was worth the, the time and money and energy you put into it? Um, were you able to apply what you learned to your business? And if so, with what kind of results? And maybe none of you have. Um, and if you haven't, it's okay. It's not like a you know, it's not like a uh, ha gotcha, why haven't you invested in your business? But I'm kind of curious just kind of what people's thoughts are on this idea. Like, and I hesitate to put a number on this, guys. I hesitate to say, all right, how many of you invested at least 100 bucks in your education for business? Because to some people, like $100 will be a lot of money, and to others, it'll be nothing. And then some people will be somewhere in the middle of that range. So I hesitate to put a value on it because I don't know what's a lot to you or a lot to me or a little to you or a little to me. You know, that's going to be different for all of us, and we're all different levels. Um, but you know, did you, what did you get out of it? Like I'm currently in one paid membership group. Um, I'll, I'll just give my disclosure too, and then we'll go through some of the, the chat. I'm in one paid membership group with the green room. Some, of you know, um, that's kind of the only recurring business charge. I really haven't taken any courses to speak of. I've invested in some subscriptions for certain things for the business, but those weren't really educational. They were more operational and transactional. So I'm just kind of curious what people's, uh, and not because I'm, I'm not doing this guys, full disclaimer, I'm not doing this because I'm preparing some course or I've got some monetary idea to pitch. I don't, and I'm not. Um, I'm really genuinely interested in what's people's mindset around this idea because I see a lot of opportunities that people have out there in, the reselling world and I'm just kind of curious what people think about them like I know what people think who actually speak up and comment but there's a lot of people who just never seem to really comment one way or other like if somebody comes out with a course or there's a conference or there's an event to go to you know how do you think it's gonna be worth it or will it be worth it um, a couple people were saying here in the chat that um, Lee said I prefer to go to the library to find the information I need reasonable I mean public libraries are free um, you might run, I, I would think you might run into a time in this issue with technology sometimes because sometimes what the library has is not as current, but I could be wrong on that. Um, clearing for clutter, clearing clutter raises her hand. Uh, Ken has a mentor. Hmm. Tell us about that. Ken is your mentor worth it? Someone you pay every month. I'm assuming somebody who's guiding you, helping you, encouraging you. Um, uh, 
Ronnie has paid for paid groups. Um, DJ said, I learned by just watching videos like yours, reading online. Okay, so you've invested the time and energy, if not the dollars, to um, educate yourself. Fair enough. Uh, Big Boy says, I bought a few books before I found YouTube. The info was outdated. Yeah, that's always the problem with printed info, right? I mean, it, it gets out of date pretty quickly, and then, you know, what do you do? Um, Soul says, I took business and accounting courses at GTCC. Now, that's interesting because those can apply to any business, right? And they're not just reselling the particular, you know, gig we're in, but you could apply that info to any business you were a part of. Uh, Marco says, definitely worth it. No one will take this new knowledge from you. Now, that's a great point, Marcos. Nobody's going to really, once you learn something, you have it forever. You know, theoretically, as long as you don't forget it. And um, you can apply it over and over. That's a good point. Um, Ken says, you only get the basics from YouTube when to get advanced stuff, you must get a mentor. Hmm, all right. Camila says, I did a group. And they do webinars, and they're going to pay this weekend, going to pay to learn to use Illustrator. The webinars have learned a lot. Um, that's cool. Illust Illustrator is very interesting to me, and but I'm not a graphically oriented person, so I struggle with stuff like that. Um, I see that as a, a challenge for me because like it's like it's from Mars sometimes looking at it. I mean, I can kind of figure it out, but oh, it's a struggle. I would pay a college or school, but not an internet marketer. Um, that's an interesting approach, Sol, and I'm going to ask you to maybe expand on that. Why would a college or school be different than, quote, unquote, an internet marketer? What's your, your thought process there? Uh, 365 says to pay money for courses. I did that, but it uh, worth it and not. It depends. The most information you buy are the most free on YouTube and other sources if you make a deep search. Well, you bring up an interesting point there, 365. Is it worth, let me ask you this, and there, here's like a side question. Is it worth to pay someone for information to get it packaged and timely to you versus taking the time and energy to go try and find it on your own and verify if it's valid or correct or not? That That's kind of another part of that argument, I guess. You know, I mean, I mean you can learn these days, you could probably, through Google and YouTube and all these, you could learn to do virtually anything. But are you going to learn it correctly and timely, and uh, in a way that will enable you to justify the time and energy you spent on it? That's kind of another part to that equation. But I, I get where you're going. Um, Hank's still working on my bachelor's. I guess I'll count as his business ed, even though I didn't start it. Yeah, I mean, of course it is. It's definitely. Uh, let's see. Uh, hello, Karen. Karen's still not back. She's still in Florida, and her Nana and Cousin Amy are watching. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So make it good. Great. No pressure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Thrift says, I was just in a college business class and learned more of how to speak and communicate with potential customers. Send email, blast bad newsletters. That's definitely a skill worth learning. Um, Ronnie says, paying for info is mostly shortcuts. It's like spoon feeding. I've not learned a lot for groups, but being friends and networking with us is where I've learned the most. Interesting. Which the networking part, and, and that's something that Young brought up in his um, podcast, was that he, when you, when you go to these certain events, I know, Ronnie, you guys are having an event here next month. When you go to these events, you get the opportunity to network with other like-minded people and you're going to find that other people who are doing what you do, um, they're doing it a little differently. They they approach it a little differently sometimes, and you can learn things from that. Um, so that's kind of like a secondary benefit to you know maybe a conference or an event like that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so here here's. Here was kind of a, a one thought I had about this, guys, about should you invest in your business education? Um, because Young was trying to put numbers around it, which I can respect that. You know, I always, I always approach these things from a math standpoint. Show me the numbers. You know, I believe in the numbers. If you can, you can prove things with numbers or at least get very close to proving it. 
so here's the here's the question. You know, time is the one commodity we can never get more of. We've all got the same 168 hours a week as everybody else. So that's that's a given. Like you're going to spend that somehow each day, each week, each month, each year. So the question becomes: Let's say you have the opportunity to go to a conference. I don't know what would be a good on you know let's say it's the ebay summit the one out in uh what is it vegas and i don't know how much that conference is a few hundred bucks maybe let's just say it's 500 dollars. i don't know the price somebody wants to type it they can type it i'm not going to it so i don't know and so you can go to this ebay summit you're going to spend 500 bucks on it you're going to maybe spend another another 500 to 750 or so maybe you're, let's just say you're going to spend 1500 dollars between plane hotel and so on what do you have to get back if you're going to invest fifteen hundred dollars in something and it could be less than that but let's say you're going to invest fifteen hundred dollars in a summit for ebay and it's obviously a high profile event what do you have to get back guys and in what time frame like what makes x number of dollars worth it in y amount of time um and that's the question I always think about because you're going to spend that time doing something. And the money, you don't have to spend on said conference or group, but you're going to spend it on something. You know, I mean, if I told you you could go to a conference and spend $1,000 and in the next five years, you're going to make $100,000 with what you learned. Is that worth it to you? 20000 bucks a year for three days out of your life? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. On the other hand, if I said you're gonna go there and you're gonna only make $10,000 over the next five years, is that worth it to you, 2,000 bucks a year? I don't know, but I'm just kind of curious you know, what people think about that because how, how, how do you get value back out of a conference, out of a course, out of an ebook, out of a PDF, out of a meetup, whatever it is. You know, is. We're talking about having a meetup in, in July here in Charlotte. And honestly, guys, when I first thought about this idea and Karin and I started talking about it, I entertained briefly for the moment, you know, hey, maybe we could incorporate some specific information around this. And we decided after a good pound, uh, amount of time that, you know, it just wasn't really, it really wasn't what we wanted to to do because we weren't sure we could provide enough value to you guys coming to meet up. Um, so we didn't. And we think there will be value in the networking. There's value in, I think there's value too, like there's an intrinsic value in meeting other people, doing what you're doing, realizing you're not alone. They have the same challenges and obstacles and fears and all these things, right? I mean, that's worth something, right? Um, and I think that's always valuable if you can meet a group of people like that. But it's interesting to me because I see a lot of people who, I guess Facebook is going to be the one where I have the biggest problem. Um, and we have a Facebook group, and so do and so do some other people who are in this chat. And you know, there's several of them out there around reselling or merch or Amazon or eBay, whatever you want to find. But there's all this time spent in these groups, often. Um, Dealing with like, I don't know, I don't want to say negativity, but at least negative approaches to it. And you know, like, hey, I got scammed. Hey, uh, this horrible thing happened to me. eBay sucks, Amazon's horrible. Um, I can't believe this buyer wants to do this or says that. There, my fees went up, I got suspended, I got banned. I mean, those are all real things that happen. I'm not, I'm not trying to minimize those things. But it's curious to me why people um, spend all this time like focusing in on that, and and um, you know that's a time investment. What do you get back out of that? You know, in terms of your investment of time, and I'm not sure. You, I, I don't know what you get out of it. Like I've I've told Karen, I said, I'm literally considering. And and by the way, this is not a knock on any particular group or anything. I'm literally considering. Uh, getting out of every reselling group <laughs> on Facebook because 
you know, between the negativity, between the posts that, other than my, their own, because that's the one we started, but between the negativity and the posts that deal with just things that don't interest me or don't really have any effect on me, I don't know what I get out of them. Um, I think I actually get drugged down a little bit by them, you know, and I, I develop a, a more negative attitude by being a part of those groups. And again, I'm not knocking any group. When you get a big enough group, heck, ours is capped at 501 people, and that can be big sometimes. But when you get one that's up in the thousands, there's just no way you can shut all that down or or keep it slanted in a certain direction. I mean, it's just impossible. It's, it's a Herculean task. And, you know, people who administer Facebook groups and so on, they're not paid. <laughs> it's not their job. They don't, they don't do it full time. So you can't expect them to, to do that. <clears throat> but it's like this idea of, you know, what you invest your time and your money into. I mean, what if I told you you can invest $100,000 to make $10 million in the next five years? Would you do it? I mean, a lot of you might say, well, I don't have a hundred grand laying around, but maybe you try to find it, right? I mean, does it just simply come down to like, what do you think you're going to get out of it? Or do you just take a leap of faith based on, oh, I'm going to go invest 250 bucks and I hope I'm going to get a return. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm really curious about it, guys, what your thoughts are on it. What's, you know, what, what drives you to invest money in your business education? And, um, you know, I've I've had some limited experience with this, but I certainly don't feel like I'm real qualified to speak on it. <clears throat> um, so if you guys have any other thoughts on it, I'd love to hear them. Because for me, it's always a challenge, you know, because I, like, you know, I'm going to the uh, uh, Green Room event in July. And I didn't go last year, and I wanted to go this year. And I've had really good positive interactions with the people in the green room, um, almost, <clears throat> almost unanimously, almost completely. Um, very, very few, not even complaints, just very few things I didn't like. And so, you know, I think there's some value in me going. What I will get out of it, what I expect to get out of it, I'm not sure. Is it, is it going to be worth it? How do I even put a value on it? I, I don't, I don't know. Like, what do I, what do I need to get back out of it? You know, in terms of monetary results or networking or just having, you know, conversation with people who are in similar boats or have walked the path I've walked. I don't know what goes, what needs to go through your mind when you decide to go to one of these events or join one of these groups or buy a course or invest in a conference, you know, what have you, I don't know. Um, you know, but I'm looking forward to it because it'll it'll be the first one and the only one. <laughs> it was the only it was the only one I could squeeze in this summer, just kind of the way the schedule fell out. And um <laughs> Ronnie says you're getting a tax write-off. Well, the write-off's not as okay, that's probably true, Ronnie, but the write-off is not as valuable as is not as much as the money I'm spending. <laughs> so I'm coming out in the hole right off or not. Um, but um, I, I'm willing to put in, you know, invest in it, invest in my education as a, as a business person. And um, I don't know. It, and it'll be interesting to meet people that I've talked to online and interact with behind the scenes. And um, that's always cool. Um but I don't know. I don't know what my expectations are, you know, and maybe that's the place to be, right, guys? Like, like you go into it and you say, I don't have specific expectations, so I'm not going to really be let down um, because I'm not going to expect I'm going to come out here and my sales are going to triple next month. You know, that doesn't, I don't think that's, I don't think that's reasonable, you know, and that probably is a whole other conversation is, you know, what do you do when you go to one of these events or you, or you buy a course or you you download something, you join a webinar or whatever. Um, I don't know. What what do you expect to get out of it? Like what makes it a success or not? I think for a lot of people, maybe you guys would disagree, but I think for a lot of us, it's just you either 
feel that you did or you didn't. And I hate that because, you know, I like to be able to, to quantify things and say, I put this in and I got this back out of the event, but I don't think I can do that with, uh, with an event like this. And I don't think you can do it with a conference. A lot of times it's like, you know, what are you going to get? I mean, you could argue with a course or a book or something. Maybe you do like you say, all right, well, I implemented these two ideas and I saw my results go up by, you know, 10% next month. I don't know. Um, I don't know guys. I mean, it, it comes down to what is your, what do you think you're going to get back out of it versus what you're going to have to put into it. Right. And I don't know how you make that calculation before you do something, you know, especially if it's like an event, like if it's like if it's Ronnie's event there in, in Chicago or it's the green room meetup or it's I think there's a conference up in the upper Midwest in June as well. It's like, what do you what do you what are you going to get out of it? Well, I don't know. I don't know. You might not get anything out of it. Um, Thrift Shop Hustler says for me, 90 percent of the stuff they say at a conference, I know, but that 10 percent is what is worth it. That seems, I mean, that seems pretty reasonable, right? I mean, you're gonna, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna go there. Huh. I get people who comment on this channel sometimes, guys, who want like content every single second of a video, and I'm like, that's not possible. You cannot produce a one hour, a thirty minute, heck, even a fifteen minute video where it's just pure content every single second with no break. I mean, so you can't go to like one of these events and think it's just gonna be amazing every single second and there's never you know they're just going to pack in some i mean first of all i'm not even sure you could handle it if they did i mean imagine going to a lecture in a class for two hours straight and it's just reading out of a book with no break oh i mean that's exhausting like you can't even keep up with that and i don't think you'd get much i don't know that's very effective but there's people who, who say they want that and i think nah you really don't want that you think you do but that's because they didn't get what they wanted. So they feel like, well, you should have given me more. Well, if what I'm giving you is crap, why do you want more crap? <laughs> you know, I can't give you steak every second. Sometimes you're just going to have to deal with a salad. And that's just the way it goes. I'm not able to produce just continuous content every second of a video. Um, so you know, when you go to one of these events, I think it's, I don't think it's fair to suggest that it's just going to be so packed with content, you're not going to have time to take a breath. Um, that's not, that, that's not really, that's not really a legitimate expectation in my opinion. Uh, let's see here, some other, Ronnie has no content. Yeah, I'd agree with that, Ronnie. You have no content. <laughs> uh, Life has, uh, let's see, you can turn crap into fertilizer, Darren Ackleman. Yeah, you're right. Fertil crap makes pretty good fertilizer. It's pretty funny. Um, all right. So anyway, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what I wanted to talk about with this topic today, guys. So I don't know that you know. I didn't expect like uh, us to come away and we all agree and you know this is what. This is what you should do, whether you should invest. I would say, though, that if you're not willing, like, here's here's the one thing I would say about this topic that I didn't say at the beginning. You may not be willing to invest money in your education as a reseller, as a business person, but I promise you, you're going to have to invest time and energy and probably money as well. Um, because the more time and energy you put in that's focused and dedicated to learning your craft, you know, the more effectively you will use the money that you do spend. But you're going to put in time and energy, guys, and there might be times when you need to put in money as well. I would say in general, don't be afraid to do that. I think it's it's there's always potential to get a really big bang for your buck with some of these events and courses and opportunities out there. Not all of them, but you know, you don't know it all. <laughs> I'm just going to say it like that. You don't know everything. I don't know everything. Nobody in this chat feed knows everything. And you're going to have to sometimes realize you're going to have to put yourself around other people and other situations where you can learn from them. 
And as long as you're doing that, I think it's a wise investment, whether it be time or energy or money, whatever investment you need to make. But as long as you're continually learning and trying to strive to improve your yourself and your business, I mean, I think that's worthwhile. Um, now, sometimes you're going to have more or less of those three things, time, energy, or money to put in, but that's all right. But I think you have to always be learning and you have to put yourself around people and in situations like that. And, you know, I learn from you guys on this channel. I learn from other YouTubers and other resellers every single day, you know, and I watch, I watch other people. I don't watch maybe quite as much as I used to. And it's not because I feel like I know everything. It's just because the demands of my time have gotten, you know, greater. And it's just a trade off. Like, well, I got to trade off. Sometimes I got to do a little less business education and a little more business production over here, or I got to go spend, you know, more time with family matters or, or whatever it is. Um, so you have to be willing to invest in your, your business education, at least some, somehow. Uh, yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I was watching too, guys, it just, Kind of brought this to my mind. I was watching. <clears throat> I love the show Shark Tank, and I was watching a video on um, on Mark Cuban. And this Mark Cuban made his big money on a company called AudioNet, which streamed events live to the internet back in the late '90s, back when the internet was still, you know, the wild, wild west. And it was it, and it became a company called Broadcast.com, which he ended up selling for like, I don't know, ended up being like two or three billion dollars. It was crazy. But what was interesting is, is that Cuban got approached by another guy who had the idea for AudioNet. He didn't call it AudioNet, but he had the idea. But Cuban took the idea and ran with it to a whole other level. And the guy wanted an investor, and and the guy ended up being becoming an investor in his own company. And he was a little bitter about that, but the reality is most of the inventions and the things that are big, you know, gadgets or ideas built on other ideas, sometimes just improved them. And, you know, that was clearly what Cuban did. Um, he took that guy's idea and morphed it into something that went way beyond what, you know, he was, he was able to do with it. Um, and the guy actually ended up being an investor in his own company and he, and he cashed out and he was fine financially. But it's like if that guy, it's interesting because the guy had an idea, he took it to Cuban and another guy as, to become investors. They ended up investing, but they ended up owning the company eventually. And, you know, the idea became something much larger than the three of them. So the guy had the idea, Cuban and his partner had the, the finances and the, the drive to push it into a different company. Would that have happened if they wouldn't have connected to each other and taken a risk? It wouldn't have. The guy would have probably never figured out how to get his idea off the ground. And Mark Cuban, who had already sold a company a few years earlier for a few million dollars, may never have came up with that idea. He may never have gone in that direction. Probably wouldn't have. So, you know, that sort of symbiotic relationship between those three, and I think there's some other people too, but mainly those three, it changed their lives forever because they were able to collaborate together and find a way to, to make something. You know, they all had a different skill set they brought to the table. So I just think, you know, going and putting yourself around people like that, you never know where it's going to turn. You never know where it's going to go. Somebody in a group or in an event could say something that just sets off a spark in your mind and it just grows into a, a wildfire, that spark, and just, you know, burns its way right through your business and, you know, sets your whole business on fire and you just, you know, get much greater results just because that person said something that you wouldn't have thought of or in a way you wouldn't have thought of, and there you go. Um, so anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Paul says Yahoo bought it from Cuban for 5.7 billion. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, you know, the internet is one of those businesses where, or one of those networks where, where like winners and losers come and go really quickly <laughs> on the internet. So, you know. Uh, Q 
King of Thrift says, be careful who you listen to. Many of these YouTube resellers, in quotes, are marketers selling ice cream, no meat. That's true of anything. So I don't know if that's really that, that revolutionary of an idea. Uh, Krillin asks, any tips on getting smoke smell out of clothes that are new with tags? Oof, that's a tough one. I'm not the best person to ask on that. I have heard things like you can try putting it in a bag or box and seal it up with newspaper. Newspaper sometimes can take out smell, but I really don't know. Um, I'm not the right one to ask. Uh, Michelle says spray it with vinegar and then steam it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, DJ, not a Cuban fan. That's okay. I mean, I'm not I'm not always a huge fan of Cuban either for other reasons, but you know, he he was successful at something and I can give him credit where credit's due. You know, I mean, he he figured out a way to build a better mousetrap, I guess, and the at the right moment, at the time when the world needed the mousetrap. So, sometimes that's the way it is. You know, a lot of life is about timing and just taking a shot. Ah, uh, let's see. Um, what else is going on? Uh man, I got some shoes still here to list today. I got some shoe cleaning done today, which will be cool. Um, I really like using those products we got that um, <laughs> Chris says, because I mentioned Cuban doesn't mean I endorse him or is paid to do so. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get some sort of uh, copyright violation or uh, YouTube's gonna have some sort of restriction because I mentioned Mark Cuban's name. Um yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, yeah, so I did a lot of shoes this morning to to get those cleaned up and get those started processing. So looking forward to that over the next few hours. That'll be my afternoon project. And, um, you know, um, I mentioned sales earlier, guys. So, yeah, I'm probably going to end up about breaking even with last month, which in terms of this eBay account which was nothing spectacular, to be completely honest. Um, you know, listings are going to be up somewhere in the high, probably somewhere in the high single digits. So like maybe up 7 or 8%, which is a little frustrating, to be quite honest. I mean, when you would think when you get more listings up, you will sell more. Of course, it's got to be the right thing, what people want, and the right price, and all that good stuff. So uh, let's see. I just wish people wouldn't steal others' ideas and take credit for it. that's bad karma and well deserved toward the predator. Yeah, Darren, I hear you, man, but that's kind of the way it works. I mean, any just about any innovation you want to look at right now, I mean, you kind of build on things. Like that's the way it kind of works. You know, Facebook built on MySpace. Um, Windows built on, I think it was, who was it? Uh, IBM or Xerox's idea for a graphical interface. I mean, it just you know, the, the iPhone was not the first smartphone. I mean, it's just things, that's just the way it works. You know, sometimes somebody, a new idea comes along and then you got to sort of revolutionize it and make it better. And the market rewards usually the best design, the best marketing, the best execution. And that's just the way it is. I mean, capitalism is destructive. Um, you know, there's some ideas you can't steal. You can only go so far, but um, that's just kind of the way it works. No tip for getting security tags off. Oh, I don't know. Maybe take it to a store that's got that type of tag if you can find it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Masuza says sales are slow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, everybody's kind of, a lot of people kind of having the same, um, sort of the same comment that, I guess a lot of people who watch this show too in this channel are clothing sellers and clothing this time of year can be a little tricky. Um, but you know, it's interesting because our friends Tiffany and James down in South Carolina with, with over a 5,000 item store don't really see a drop off in the summer. Um, they, they made that very clear when we were down there last week. They said, nope, we really don't. It doesn't really drop off much for us. It stays pretty consistent year round. In terms of the number of items they sell, the, the income that comes in. And I don't think they get a I don't know if they really get a big pop at fourth quarter either. 
which is interesting. But there are ways to sell clothes and not have the drop off. Um, it's going to depend on what you sell and, again, your price point, your, of course, all your things and normal things like keywords and your listings and all that good stuff. But, you know, that's just it's part of it. It's one of the reasons we have started evolving towards shoes. Um, looking to see what we've sold in shoes. Yeah, so far we've sold like 27 since we started this right at the end of March. And, you know, we haven't listed, how many we listed total? We've listed 114 total. Um, we don't have 114 listed right now. But um, I don't know if that's good or not. Tino says it's pretty good. <laughs> but I don't know if it's really that good. Um, you know, we are still definitely learning. I think with shoes, just like anything else, it's just going to be a matter of just getting enough listings up. And, you know, but one of the things, too, that I was listening to, going back to that merch show with Yong and Glenn Zubia, Yong made the point that in, the, in one of the episodes that, you know, even though he had a lot less listings up than Glenn, and, and it's not to play a comparison game, but at the moment, his sales were close to Glenn's. Like, they weren't close to Glenn's, but they were, like, let's say he had, a, you know, one-fifth of the items, but he was only 50, he was at 50% of the sales. So he was executing like his designs were selling and that just reinforced to me this idea that if you put up the right things the right price with the right pictures and listing description the right time of year you can get sales whether it's summer whether it's winter doesn't matter um so you know i just always got to keep that in the back of my head and you guys too, should too just remember you'll you'll be able to get sales if you're doing it if you're giving people what they want the way they want it, you know, the price, all those things go together. Uh, Darren likes variety, selling Legos, vintage electronics, and a few in between. Yeah, I mean, I wish I understood the Legos market better, but I just don't think I will. I don't think I can put in the time and energy to get educated on it or have enough supply to really go after it. Um, here locally. I could be wrong about the supply part because I really don't know. I'm just kind of eyeballing it off what I've seen. But, you know, Legos, somebody posted this. Um, I don't know where I saw this. I don't know how they figured this out, but Lego sets were like beating the return on gold or something over the last, or beating the stock market over the last 20, 30 years. It was crazy. And um, Legos was a better investment than the stock market. You know, so why not? <clears throat> um, you, you could probably, in some cases, just sit on Lego sets, I would imagine, and just watch them appreciate year after year because people want them. I mean, man, they're an iconic toy, and they just show no signs of going away anytime soon, which I find so interesting. Um, you know, because by, cer by a certain age, kids have outgrown them. They're, they're no longer interested in Legos, but there is that, that range where people just seem to really like them. I guess it's kids. I don't know. Maybe there's adults who collect them too. What do I know? Um, I shouldn't, I shouldn't uh, presume it's only kids, but, um, mega block sucks. Stay away. Uh, do you, we still hit the bins? We do drummer. We, we had them last week down there in Columbia. They were eh, okay. Nothing great. We haven't hit ours actually recently, but we'll probably do that this coming week. And, um, yeah, we'll see if we can pop some some good sales out of the bins and so on. We haven't been – yeah, we haven't been there in about two weeks, I guess, the bins here locally. And um, we definitely will have some opportunity to, to, to get some, some get some inventory, especially with June coming, right, guys? Have you guys figured out what your objectives are for June? What's your listing goals? What sort of um, sourcing are you going to need to do? What are you hoping your outcomes will be? If you haven't done that, now is the time to start thinking about that because you only got a few more days left in May. And um, you should be able to see a trend, guys. And um, from January on through this month, you'll see some trends if you're keeping track, and um, hopefully. And you, should, you can take advantage of those trends and start to maybe project, all right, well, here's what I think June will look like. 
And so here's what I'll need to source. Here's what I'll need a list and so on and so on and so on. Um, you know, not rocket science to do that, but if you're not even looking at it in some way or another, you're gonna have no idea and you're just kind of flying in the dark, which I'm never a big uh, fan of. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> hey, Tanya, how are you? I didn't say hi to you earlier, I'm sorry. Uh, hoping to make a ton of money for the reseller trips and trips for the family. <laughs> yeah, right? That's That would be nice. Um, yeah, that would always be nice. So hoping to make a ton of money. Well, yeah, that would be nice. We'll see what happens with the summer. Um, I'm kind of curious how shoes are going to do in the summer for us. That's kind of the big unknown. Um, but we'll see. Uh, Chris says, are we going to eBay open? We are not. We actually talked about that earlier a little bit. Just cannot fit that in the schedule and the, the budget, honestly. I'd like to go. I think it'd be great. Um, but not going to go to this one. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll hit the one next year. What's up, Luke? Luke, man. Pool table. A few hours, you and me and Eric. Darts. Yeah, you'll kill me in darts. Um, <laughs> DJ says, I'm not a good seller face to face. That's why I like eBay. That's a great reason, DJ. Honestly, that's perfect. You found a good, a good format for, for sales. Uh, John says, my biggest fear involves risk versus reward or basically spending money with no return. Fear causes a chilling effect for me. Yeah, John, but I'm going to say this to you. Your money sitting there is losing its value, too. It's losing a couple of ways. One, it's losing in inflation. It's getting worth less and less every year. But also the other way is that you're losing the opportunity to put it to work for you, whether it's through investing in reselling and stock market, real estate, you know, wh whatever your your objective or whatever your uh, ways are. Um, so, Luke, what's my handicap? In pool? Dude, straight up, man. <laughs> so why do you need a handicap? <laughs> we'll, we'll play cutthroat, and you guys will end up ganging up on me probably, which that's always fun. Uh, let's see. Investing yourself always has a return on investment. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, let's see. Engaging your brain and skills, open doors you never knew existed. Yeah, well, we were talking about that earlier, Luke, that um, – we would have to, you know, what what's worth your time and energy and money? We, you know, money is the one that everybody goes to, but it's also time and energy. What's worth it to you? What do you expect to get out of it? Is it reasonable to have an expectation? You know, what, what signifies a, a win versus not a win when you invest your time or money in educating yourself? I don't know. Um, you know, you know, guys, think about this for a moment. If you want to become a doctor, for instance, in the United States, you're committed to four years of college, four years of medical school, and what is it, two years of a residency? You're also committed to probably, I don't know, $200,000, $300,000. Now, you might have ways to get scholarships and all that good stuff. I'm not, I'm not here to talk about the finance, but you're putting in 10 years of your life to become something. Um, with no reward that, or with no guarantee that you're going to be wildly successful at it. I mean, there's plenty of doctors out there who are, you know, a pediatrician. You know, they're making decent money, but man, they pay a lot of money too. Like they owe a lot of malpractice insurance. Their their student loan debt might be huge. Um, you know, it's not not everyone who comes out of medical school is a, a neurosurgeon making a half million bucks a year. So there's a risk. There's a risk you put in all that time and money and energy. And don't get back out of it what you thought. And, you know, I'm not saying you should go put 10 years into, into a specific course of study. But to think about putting, you know, a few days or a week into it or taking a course and spending several hours on that or listening to a webinar, I don't know. I mean, it's a time risk but and it's some money, but it's, you know, hopefully if you get even just a couple things from it, you probably get some sort of return. And you, you guys all got to figure that out for your own. Um, but I, I don't know what's worth it to you. I mean, you're never going to know. This is the problem. 
you're never going to know on the back end what you're going to get out of it. You're never going to know, I'm going to put this amount of time and money <clears throat> into this event, this course, this conference, this group, and you're never going to know exactly what you're going to get out of the back end. It's always a risk. Life is nothing but risk. It's nothing but handling risk. Every single day you take a risk. I mean, you know, you take a risk driving to the grocery store. You, t you take a risk, um, you know, flying on a plane. You take a risk, you know, being around somebody who has a, an illness that you're going to get sick. You know, I mean, you t it's risk. It's all risk. Um, so you just got to learn what's acceptable to you and what's not. And um, I don't know. I don't think you want to live in fear, though, John, like you were talking about earlier. Uh, fear, f fear, it's funny you mentioned it because fear will do exactly what you said it is doing to you. It's making you freeze. We talked about this on 10 and 10 a couple weeks ago. Freeze, fight, or flight. You're in the freeze mode. I'm fearful of putting my money in and losing it, so I'm freezing. I'm doing nothing. Um, and that's common, but you're still losing money and you're losing opportunity, even by doing the course of action that you're doing. I don't know if he's still listening or not, but that's, that's a real outcome to doing nothing. And so you have to, you have to manage risk, you know, and risk is just part of life. Um, I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any way around it. There's no such thing as living in a bubble where you have the risk of nothing bad ever happening to you. That just doesn't exist for anybody. Um, so, you know, learn to manage the risk and learn to think about what risk are worth taking is part of it. But to think you're not going to take any risk, though, I think that's that would be naive. And I'm not saying you, John, are saying that. But I'm saying if someone believes that, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to risk anything. Yeah, you are. <laughs> we all risk things every day. There's no way around that. Uh, let's see. I'm curious how common ADD is among resellers. <laughs> That's a show topic, a whole other show topic. I don't, I don't even know. Uh, accounting degree, no job when I finished. Many in charge of hiring didn't have a degree when they started and feel threatened by you taking their job. I experienced it firsthand. Yeah, I mean, there you, there you go, DJ. I mean, a degree is not a guarantee of anything. You're, you're taking a risk. You know, you're taking a risk by not getting a degree. I mean, there's, they're both risk of different types, but sure, absolutely. Um, evaluate risk and be humble to failure. Yeah, I mean, somebody was talking, I read that quote the other day. They said they loved, they loved failing because it was really the only way they learned anything. I'm paraphrasing. I don't know if that was exactly the quote, but I thought that was interesting, you know. Failure enables you to learn because when you succeed, yes, you, you learn what something worked, but you kind of started out thinking it would work. Um, you know, and you, you kind of have to go off that direction, you know, realizing that some of the things you do are not going to work or they're not going to work out the way you thought or in the time you thought. And you have to, that's part of it. That's part of the risk of being an entrepreneur. Uh, it's part of the risk of being a person. You know, you just, it's like, hey, I, I got to get across town. It's going to take me 20 minutes. And then traffic happens, and it takes you 45. That was a risk the second you started down that path that something would happen. There was an accident. Who knows? Whatever. Um, but you just have to go out there and manage risk every day. We should do like a whole show on risk versus reward. <laughs> but I don't know what that's, that would be. Um that's why I became an eBay seller and hubby still has a day job. There you go. So you're taking the risk of uh, failing, but you've got a backup system. So you're man you're mitigating the risk with, you know, hubby's job. That's perfectly, perfectly good. Makes sense. All right, guys, listen, we're about at the hour. So I think it's going to do it for today. Hit the like button. Leave me a comment down below. Um, check out the links for uh, cool supplies and so on. And anything else you need um, from Amazon, all the stuff that we use. I'm going to do some more equipment videos and things like that in the near future about what we use and how we use it. Just little short videos like we did on um, how to measure genes the other day because um, a lot of people like that. So um, I appreciate you guys coming out today and checking out the big show. And um, hopefully we'll be back Monday with Karin. She'll be back in town. We'll come back and see all you guys on 
Monday afternoon. I don't know if we'll do a 10 or 10 Monday morning or not. We might. All right. Well, that's going to do it for guys. Um, thanks again. And as always, Prof Sales saying good sales to you.